Hi, welcome to another Max 8 tutorial. This is tutorial 21, Grooving with Groove. And we are going to have to be grooving today because we have so much to do. In the last tutorial, we made this lovely object to record um, into a buffer, buffy mit buffer, and then to play and manipulate the playback with Groove. We used uh, this slider to manipulate the speed, we used this one to manipulate the pitch, and we used this range slider to pick out looping points in the groove um, to play back. And so uh, without uh, further ado, I'll just record something into the buffer here. Uh, is everything up? That's up. This is up. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, This is tutorial 21, Grooving with Groove. And then we can also uh, play that back. This is tutorial 21, Grooving with Groove. Beautiful. We can loop it and play it again, maybe from there. This is tutorial 20. This is tutorial 21. And we also added these beautiful presets here to make whatever's in the buffer sound strange. Okay, okay, for goodness sake. Stop, stop, there's the stop button. Remember to always install a stop button. So, it um, occurs to me that when you put things into Groove, you're essentially doing a sampling oper uh, excuse me, into a buffer. You're doing a sampling operation, and Groove is very good at sampling things back out the other side because it can change the pitch and it can change the speed. So wouldn't it be cool if we could set it up so that we could change this pitch somewhat accurately with uh, a keyboard? So let's go ahead and try to do that. First, let's just um, make room for the keyboard. So um, I'm sorry that you have to witness this housekeeping that goes on whenever we're working on a Max patch, but it's necessary. I'm just going to move this down, down. We don't really need to see the speaker. We know what it is. And I'm going to move the recorder. We're going to keep the recorder, of course. Oops, I can't get the thing there. We're going to move it down. And then let's go ahead and put a B patcher in here. Uh, type letter N and then type B patcher. There it is. And now we just have to click on it so that we get the inspector. Click on the inspector if you don't have it. Come on down here and find a file. For me, it is just called keyboard. For anyone in my class, it's called their name plus keyboard. And for those of you not in my class, I will put the keyboard on the YouTube video. Note to people in my class, that is for people who are not in my class. Okay, and now that you know that, here's what we're going to do here. There's the keyboard. Looks great. And um, we'll just make sure it's working here. Whoops, locking patcher. We turn up the volume, and we turn this to the synth... The uh, audio unit synthesizer or wavetable synthesizer if you're on a PC. And we'll just play some keys. That's ASDF and etc. And we know we can uh, change the instruments as well. Great. Cool. Um, we, however, are not going to be able to change the instruments from here when we use this with the groove. We're going to have to change them in this patch. Or you could go back and build your own keyboard. Either way, it's up to you. But instead of sending it out to the synthesizer, we'll send it out um, one of the MIDI buses. And then what we'll do is, um, unlocking our patcher here, is we will receive it in a way. So type in N for new object. And we're just going to receive note in. Why note in? because note in already picks out the notes and the velocities 
rather than giving us all the MIDI information that we don't particularly want. So um, let's just prove that that's true. We'll type an I, we get a little integer there. I option click on it, or you could just type I again. And we should get the note here and the velocity here, which will be on or off, right? So um, it's going through the bus, we lock our patcher, and we type ASDF. There's A, letting up, get a zero, pushing down, get 105, let up. Good. It's all working. We don't hear anything because it's not going to the synthesizer. It's just going to note in. And we're going to use this to control this here for speed. And then we're going to use the zero to control the on and offness of the notes. So that is our challenge today. So I'm going to, again, make a little room for myself here and figure out how on earth we're going to do this. So um, for the note, it's relatively simple. What we want to do is say, um, we'll put a new object, and we're going to put MIDI, which is M to F. That's MIDI to frequency. And what we can do is this 51 will then change to a frequency. And we'll put a, a float box below it to see what that frequency is. So here we go. And I'm going to type a G. I'm going to find middle C, just somewhere in the middle of the keyboard so that we can remember it. OK, so here we go, uh, locking our patcher. Is that, no, that's not C. Uh, C, there we go. So 60 is, and that's pretty much the middle of the keyboard as we know. 60 is going to give us 261.6. So we can go about this uh, any number of ways, but since whatever we've recorded, we want to be somewhere near the middle of the keyboard, hang in there with me a second here. We're going to take this number and divide it by, um, by 261.6. <laughs> Why would we do that? Well, because then we'll get a number. Okay, type N, and then just um, the forward slash, which means divided by. And then we're going to say, I already forgot the number, now I have to hit it again. Uh, what was 60? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, was it J? Whoops. Okay. Locking our patcher. Now we'll try J. No, it was K. It seems too high. Well, okay, whatever. 261.6. Unlocking our patcher. 261.6. Six. There we go. So whatever comes in here is going to get divided by 261.6, and then it will be a fraction that comes out. We'll put an F down here. Uh, F meaning a float box, and we'll be able to see what it is. Right? And then we're going to send this down to this slider. And we'll just see how that works for pitch. Now we can we can shorten all of this eventually, but let's just uh, see how that works. So I'm going to lock my patcher, and um, I'm going to I think I have to tell this thing to go, but I can push a key down and say you'll notice that this is a C that's uh, a full octave down from that C, and it says 0.5, and we know that an octave a lower octave is half of an upper octave, and the next higher up octave is twice as high. So we nailed it in one try. So now um, I'm going to uh, make sure this is all on, 
Thank you. People are just sending me all sorts of things. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit uh, loop is on. So we'll just hear it over and over again. Um, and so here we go. Turn the volume up a little so you can hear it. Okay, now we'll play up the keyboard. Okay, stop that. Let's try a different <clears throat> um, uh, a recording so we can have something a little less distracting. Um, we'll try this. La 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 la. How's that? Um, so uh, here we go again. There we go. Whew. Now the thing to do is to figure out, uh, we've gotten the pitch, whatever comes in, we can get it to change the uh, the pitch of this groove. So now what we have to do is work on the volume. If we get a zero in here, we want everything to turn off, and anything but a zero should turn the volume up a little tiny bit and then tell it to play until it gets a zero. So that seems simple enough. So with a live gain, the range, I believe, I'm hoping this is true, uh, goes from negative 70, where is it? There we go. Range, negative 70 point to positive 6 point, and it is a float. I'm just telling you this so that when we uh, do what we're about to do, you'll understand why. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. We're going to make a new object, and it's called scale, with no tilde. Um, and so we put in the low input, we know that's going to be 0, and the high input is going to be 127, that's what the possibilities are for MIDI. Then we hit another space bar and we want the low output, which in this case, as we just saw, is negative 70.0, and then the high is going to be 6.0. Those were the uh, numbers that we saw in the live gains inspector for its range. So hopefully, if I now run this in the leftmost inlet, um, we'll just put a type letter F under here and see what we get. So I'm going to um, uh, lock the patcher and move the volume down here and just see what we get. I'm going to push A, negative 49. So that's about halfway up its scale. That's good. Good, and then I let off, and I get negative 70, which is fully attenuated um, on the live gain. And now we can even hook it up and see that that is the case. So I'm just going to drag this on down here and hook it right up to it. And now we'll see, locking our patcher, type letter A, and the volume comes up a little bit, and then goes back down to nothing. And then I'm going to turn the volume way up here and volume goes up, volume goes down. So this is a very important component on it, but what we haven't done is tell it to play, um, to play uh, when it's anything but a zero. And there's two possibilities for doing that. One is to play the loop that we select, and one is to play a zero. In this case, I think we'll just play the loop that we select, because our the, the loop we can select, um, if you recall, if I hit a zero, Groove is going to play from zero. If I hit 3,723, it's going to play from 3,723 thousandths of a second onward until it hits the other loop point. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, our our uh, action button to this. So um, we go up here and we, whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to stick another object in here which says um, 
uh, whoops, yeah, okay, we're on unlocked, type the letter N, and just type select zero. Okay, so why would we select zero when what we want is anything except zero? The reason is, check it out down here, when we get a zero, um, that they'll send a bang here, we're going to let that bang come out and tell this to stop, please stop. And if we get anything except a zero, that number will come out here. However, it will not come out um, as a bang, but hey, we'll see what happens. We're going to connect that to this number here, and hopefully it'll just more or less activate this. It'll bang on it and tell it to start playing. So how's that sound like for an idea? All right, let's lock our patcher and see if the whole crazy thing works. Hey, and check it out. We can turn the volume up if we want right here. Okay, as though I didn't have to listen to my own voice enough already. So now comes the tricky part. We are going to break this up into a sort of individual groove unit. So we're going to make instances of a patcher. Each one is going to play a voice, so then you'll be able to play like three of them at a time. As, as we've done in previous uh, tutorials with the um, quote-unquote analog devices. But we have to decide what we want in and what we want out. And so um, in order to make this as simple as possible, what we're going to do is send stuff um, from things that we want out of the um, individual let's call them synthesizers. Let's call it a sampling synthesizer. We're going to make a sampling synthesizer uh, patcher, and then there's some things we want outside, like we want to control the speed to all of them from the outside, but we want six of them. We don't want to have to change the setting six times. So let's say we want this out. I'm going to um, just grab it here, and I'm, I'm going to grab all these actually. I'm going to move it over here. And so what I'm going to do is um, interrupt this line here and say I'm going to make a new object called a send object. And let's call it send. Uh, I'm going to say Buffy speed. Okay, you're not going to say send Buffy speed. You're going to say send your name speed or your own. Come up with your own thing. Don't use mine. Okay. And then we're going to make another object just like it. I often do this. I just option click on it. I come down here and then I change the S to an R. S means send. R means receive. So they're like a little uh, broadcasting tower here. So now look. I take this one and I put it over here on receive. So now whenever I send this speed, anything that has a receive buffy speed is going to get this. So now we know that this can be inside there. And I'm just going to tell you this little trick too. If you have a stupid looking cable here, you can just click on it and say command Y and it'll just uh, sort of straightens it, kind of neatens itself up. So we've got speed taken care of. Um, the stop and go things, they'll um, from about here on down is going to be internal. So we're not worried about those. Presets, we're going to, um, that's going to be out. Let's just say it's going to be kind of up here-ish. Let's just make it long and skinny. So anything that's out, we don't have any real problem with right now. Um, the range, we're going to want it to be um, out too, because it controls everything. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say um, a new... Uh, send Buffy Buffy min and then we're going to uh, duplicate that 
change it to a receive object and say receive Buffy Min. And then if we really want to be crazy here, we'll do the other thing for the other side. So I'll just uh, option click on them again and move them over here. And I'll say, uh, you know, you want to be a, a, at all times, you want to be as lazy as possible. So just change this to max Buffy max or um, sugar max or whatever it is you're doing that's not Buffy max because it gets confusing. So then we're going to change this right over here. And we're going to change this to that. You understand what I'm doing. I'm interrupting this wire. And then anywhere that these go, so this one that comes out of here now is going to go to the receive. And the one that comes out of here is going to go to send. And I guess that means we don't really need that one anymore except to look at it. And Oh, here's a little thing that we have to take care of before we're completely done here either. Um, you remember our friend Load Bang. Um, load Bang would probably do well. You know, just type new Load Bang and to connect to all of these. I'm going to hit shift here and say you go to normal and you uh, go to normal and you can't do that to a zero um, we have to do something else here and that is we'll make a message so this is going to anytime you whatever's in here will end up getting stuck in here but it won't affect anything until it's banged on and there's only one time it's going to be banged on and that's when it gets a load bang and I believe that our number for this um, buffer. Um, I accidentally crashed my computer and reopened it and I didn't fill this back in, but it's 6,000. I'm going to lock my patcher and say 6,000. Right, there's the 6,000. Unlock my patcher and I'm going to connect load bang to that. Okay, it's a real mess here. So there's load bang doing what it's supposed to do. It's going to take care of those things. So now we can take our range and stick it up here. Whoops, we can't because it goes behind the keyboard. We can make it skinny and look like that. We'll adjust this around a little bit later. And then we can stick our send off here to the side. Just by the way, there's some things you can't send, like presets. Just can't do it. Sorry. And then this is speed. I'm going to have this idea of putting speed along the bottom here in a horizontal format that suggests something speedy. And uh, I'm going to move this over near load bang. And we'll move this over here out of the way. All the sends and sizes and stuff can now go over here while we work on what our... Uh, uh, I guess this size, we actually do want to know what it is, so we'll put it uh, next to our next to our range, and we'll move that back in because nobody's ever going to make that many presets in their whole life. Uh, we'll make this the same size as the number. It's all making sense to me now. I can see it. I can see it. This could actually be a rather big number, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. Move this over to it. Even that up to the back of that. Make this come over here. How about presets? Oops, uh, you know what? I have another idea. I'm going to make that the same way. Then I'm going to take this record thing and stick it over here. Stick this over here. Uh, the recording button. We don't need meters because we have a live gain, so we can get rid of those, plus channel 1, channel 2. Who can't figure that out? Get rid of them. Uh, looks like we might want the live gain to be vertical here, so come back over here, change it to vertical, stick that up there. Oh, this whole thing is just looking great. Um, we can move our B patcher up there to fill in a little of that, that space. Make this the right size there. Put our speed control across the bottom. 
Um, and then there's a couple other things. Um, so we're receiving the speed. Uh, this is sending that, so we don't really care where it goes. Um, uh, it's almost hard to remember at this point what this is doing. It's uh, getting load banged and then going up there. Okay, that's all fine. Um, and then this is sending that, so I'm going to put it up there so I don't have to look at it. What else have we got here? Time stretch. Okay, time stretch is a pain in the neck because it's an attribute or a TRUI device. They only work if they're directly connected, but we can do this the same way as we did loop, and here is how we are going to do it. Um, we are going to make a message here that says time stretch, yes, and string one, and connect that up to groove, and also put a toggle on it. And you can just type the letter T. Oops. I wonder, I wonder why it, oh, I played a note. <laughs> there we go. So there's the time stretch. Um, and now we're just going to get rid of the, Oops. We'll just get rid of that one. And pitch shift is going to stay inside because that is being controlled by our piano. Um, however, uh, this load bang, we can just make it into a new load bang. We'll just make another one. You see this load bang connects from the what's outside to what's inside, so we're just going to duplicate it. If this all doesn't make sense right now, it will in a few minutes because what we're going to do is put all of this stuff inside of something, but we want to be able to control this stuff. So what we really want to do is have this X outside and this outside and anything else? No. So let's make a couple more uh, send objects here. This one is for time stretch, so Let's just write a comment that says time stretch. And then we'll make a send new, send buffy stretch, and a new send loop, send buffy loop, I mean. And I guess I'll make another comment that says loop. Now I'm going to duplicate these and turn them into receive objects. I'll type an R there, and an R there. And so now we can uh, put this down to the receive, and the send up to the X. And the same thing here. We'll take that, put it onto the receive, put this one to there, and we've got our loop, just leaving them ne next to each other there. So they're on the outside. Now all <clears throat> of this other stuff goes inside. And the only uh, thing we need to figure out here is uh, the node in doesn't. Node in goes on the outside. So I'm going to actually just hook this down to this. And then we're going to put in, uh, I'm just trying to think how to do this. Well, um, so we're going to take all of this even the gain but you don't want to get the buffer even the gain okay now hold your shift key down and take everything 
below. Um, everything below node in. Oops, I didn't hold my shift key down. Just have to do it again. There we go. Got it. And actually, this is a better way to grab everything, too. There we go. Okay. So all of this stuff gets encapsulated. Edit, encapsulate. <laughs> and it just starts playing just like that. And then you get a patcher, and we're going to call it patcher um, uh, buffy sample synth. Okay. There is buffy sample synth. And for some... Oh, of course. Um, I don't think we're going to do the presets um, for the... This, this preset's still connected because we had put a preset to all of the pitches, but now pitch is being controlled by the keyboard, so I'm just going to delete that one. Get out of there, because they'll, they'll get in a fight with each other. So now we are going to lock our patcher and click Buffy Sample Synth Open. And let's make that bigger. I know this is getting just extraordinarily complicated here. So um, this, as we said, we're actually not going to use because this is the way presets used to control that. So I'm going to delete that one. And then over here, we have two things coming in, but we really just want one uh, for reasons that you'll see in a moment. Um, I'm going to move these just over and down a tiny bit. And what we'll do is we'll make a new object here, new, uh, unpack, there it is, zero space zero. And we're going to run this one into the unpack, and then unpack down to these two. We're going to have to group this message so that, well, I'll show you in a second. So then we'll just discon we'll disconnect that, delete it, and get rid of that. We still have all of our receives down here, so they'll be re receiving all sorts of information eventually, and um, we believe everything will be working. In fact, we can test it. We can lock our patcher and uh, play a note or two, and we see that it's not working because the, um, I think the volumes, oh, because, because I just disconnected this one here. Okay, close this patcher. And then um, now we have to make this polyphonic. And the way we do that is we have the note coming in, and we're going to make a poly object. New, whoops, unlock your patcher. New, poly, not poly with a tilde, but just poly. And then you want, we're just going to go with six voices as we've done before. Uh, you could make more if you wanted, but then you'll have to make more synthesizers. But that's not a problem. And then we're going to put it in voice steel mode, so you just type a 1. Okay. So now we get two inputs for this, and that is the note pitch and also the velocity. And then what it does is it adds a channel to it. Well, we can delete this one now. Um, it sort of adds a channel to it. So we take these three things and we pack them as one message. So now we type N again and we say pack. Not pack, but pack. P-A-C-K, zero space, zero space, zero. And that'll pack all of these three things. You notice we have three here. Now we just pack them, pack them, pack them. And what happens is this one will say, where is it going to go? This will be the velocity, and this will be the pitch. Excuse me. This will be the pitch, and this will be the velocity. Thank you for pointing that out, helpful bullies. And then we get a spray object. And spray. And then we type 
6 for the number of voices. Then we type 1 for the offset so that we don't have a output named 0 because Polly doesn't make an output named 0. And then we're going to type another one to put it into list mode so it handles multiple uh, numbers instead of just one at a time. And there's our spray. There we go. And now, um, supposedly, if we run this to that, and uh, everything is working, which we have no reason to believe it is, but we can always try it out because we're fun-loving people. Um, hey, let's see what happens. Um, okay, so we only have one voice hooked up at the moment. And what we could do is duplicate this six times, or, or five more times, or we could save this as an individual file, which is what I recommend, but that means you will have to send me this individual file for your homework, if such a thing should happen. And the way that we do this is we click it open, and that's this is really a sub-patcher, and we uh, unlock it, we select everything, and we copy it, and then we select another, we make a new patcher, uh, Command N or Control N on a PC, and we paste everything into it. And then we save it. File. Save as. Remember to save it into your Max folder. Uh, this is in my teaching patches, and this is going to be Buffy sample synth. Okay, I'm saving this as a separate standalone patch right now. So now that it's saved, I'm just going to put it away, and I'm going to put Buffy sample synth the sub patcher away. But now watch what we do here. Whoops, unlocking our patcher. We change this, which has a P, Buffy sample synth, which is just a sub patcher inside of this main patcher. We're going to get rid of the P and ask it to access the actual Buffy sample synth. And there it is. La, 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 Shoo. And it works. So now we can take this and um, option click on it and make six of them. Connect them to their um, I, I know it looks like it probably matters, but it actually doesn't. Oh, but I can't stand the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the disorganization of it all. There we go. Hang in there, everybody. We're almost there. So, now we come down here. We've got our audio object, and we put in the right channels first. I'm going to hold the Shift key and do all the right channels. Letting up off my shift key so I don't end up with a spare patch right there. I mean a spare patch cord. Now I'm going to do the, excuse me, I did all the left channels. Now I'm doing the right channels. There, put the shift key down again. And do all the right ones. And let off, off my shift key before putting that last one on there. And my belief is that this will now play in six voices. So I'm going to lock my patch and try it out. Wow, it's amazing. And so there's only a couple little itty bitty things for us left to do here, and that is make it neat. So uh, move all the way over to the corner, unlock your patcher, grab all this stuff that you want in your um, presentation, right? Move it over here. Um, I'm going to 
have hmm. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to put speed across the bottom the whole way. Does that seem like too exciting? It seems kind of dumb, but I'm just going for it today. And then this is it's sort of uh, you know it, it it seems like a uh, misrepresentation, doesn't it? Like that somehow that would be time stretch then, and it's not. So do this. We'll call this one time stretch, and we'll just put an X under it, or next to it. There we go. Loop, and then X. Whoops. Hey, I don't want that. Whoops. I want that. There we go. Hello, loop. I guess that should be all the way over here at the corner. Whatever. There we go. Too much neatness going on here. And we can move those two over a little bit, though it sort of makes sense that there's a little gap between them. And then this one, here we could try this out too. Just comment and write speed, and then just put it right over the middle of it. Oops. I'll make it smaller, but you get the idea. You can do this. I'm just letting you know. I'm not the first person to think of it. Okay, so. Let's select all this stuff that we want in our presentation and then come over here and click presentation and let's see how it looks. Uh, put it in presentation mode. Whew! Gorgeous, gorgeous. And if we really wanted to be uh, fancy now we could uh, change the patch or color, the uh, locked background color to uh, a lighter shade of green, I suppose. Lighter shade of green. We'll try that, why not? Or maybe something a little more yellow. Just to give it some. Okay, let's try it. <laughs> that is not what I expected, but it's fine. <laughs> um, so, there we go. That my friends, is grooving with the groove. And we can still em employ our presets. Sometimes you, you miss the law. Uh-oh. Oh, he probably doesn't know what size it is yet. That seems to work okay. A little time getting started there. Nice. All right. Well, you enjoy uh, recording whatever you want and playing on it on your fancy sampling piano. Thank you for holding in there for literally 40 minutes, and I will see you sometime probably in the distant future in our next tutorial. Thanks for watching.